Let's talk about data masking. Now, between the data privacy framework, page field configurator, and event mapping, we have some great data masking options. And we cover these in great detail in our People Tools training classes. But I want to show you some different ideas. So here I am looking at direct deposit, and you can see I've already configured masking on the routing number. I chose to use the character X. X is consistent with what Oracle is using, say, on account number, which is delivered masking. And I've configured this masking using event mapping, which gives us a lot more flexibility. We're specifically using the set display mask people code function. Here, let me show you really quickly. Excuse me, I should say people code method. We're saying leave the last four unmasked, and we're using X. So I want to see what we can do with this. Are there other characters, for example, that we can use? I want to see, are there any limitations? And when we find those limitations, are there workarounds? So let's see what we can do with this. So common characters for masking would be X or asterisk. Are there other characters that you might find for masking? Well, a very common one with passwords is the dot character. So let's try a dot. Now, a dot is a Unicode character. That's why you can see I'm looking at a Unicode character reference here. And we'll hit the refresh button, and sure enough, there we go. We see the dots. Okay, how many dots? Well, one dot for every single character that is masked, right? That's how masking works. Are there other characters? Now, let's try something just for fun. I mean, we want to see what the limitations are of this. Okay, that's a smiley face. So when we are talking about our own masked data, yes, I am going to smile if my data is masked. That's very good. Uh, but if I happen to be a bad actor and I'm attempting to steal someone else's data, then I might be sad that when I find out the data is masked. So let's try a frowny face. And it works as well. Now, by the way, these are not your standard emoji smiley faces and frowny faces. These are the more simple Unicode characters. So let's try one that would be considered emoji though, and that is the padlock, because you know I think a padlock might be more appropriate as a masking character than say a smiley face or a frowning face. Now dot, we saw it worked. It's simple, but it's a step above, I would say the typical asterisk or X. It takes us into something I would consider to be a bit more on the modern side. Now a padlock, I would say that's even a step better. So we're saying, hey, this content is locked. Oh, except it isn't saying this content is locked because the padlock emoji did not work. Interesting. So what's going on here? Well, people code is a Unicode language. So at the application server level, the people code was interpreted, it ran, and then PeopleSoft passes the result through various programs. It's got an HTML tidy program, a minification program, and then it ends up on our browser. And somewhere through those processes, there was perhaps a problem with the character set encoding, which changed those characters basically corrupted those characters. So it's no longer rendering a padlock, but rather saying, I don't know what you asked me to render. It's just showing some boxes. Now, the really cool thing that we get out of this is we can see that since people code is a Unicode language, you and I can use any character in our people code. Now, as we saw, I may not end up in the user interface, but I guarantee you, you can use any character in the comments. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Who would have thought you could use emoji in your people code comments? All right. so. We basically run into a limitation, haven't we? So now we want to find a way to solve or work around this limitation. So let's take a look at those inputs to the set display mask method. We have the character that we're going to use for masking and how many characters to leave unmasked. Well, what about this? What if we did a zero length string? What does that do? So let's hit refresh and find out. That's interesting. Do you see they're all fours? I wonder where did that four come from? Well, here's a four. Let's try this. How about let's try five? And we get all fives there. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> let's go back with four. And let's try how about just a space instead of a zero length string. And we see, well, we don't actually see the space. You know, interesting. You notice that it isn't moving the content to the right as if to say, hey, these are all the spaces. Instead, it's white space compressing, which is what HTML does. If you give HTML 10 spaces, it's only going to show you one because HTML is white space compressed. Now, I'm actually kind of curious, what are we going to see in the HTML itself? No spaces. Interesting. Why not? Why no spaces? 
Well, the answer is again, starting at the application server, people self-generated it with all those spaces, then it passed it through a tidy program, the tidy program, and then the compression program said, oh, we don't need that white space there. It doesn't do anything for us. So let's just eliminate it. You know, I kind of like that. Maybe. Because what we're doing now is we're not only masking the characters, we're masking the length, creating one more variable for a bad actor to attempt to solve before stealing this information. That's pretty cool. But the problem that I have now is we have no visual indicator that the content in front is masked. Maybe that's okay. Maybe you should put in the header there something to say, hey, this is masked. I don't know. Here's another idea. What if we were to attach some CSS to these columns? You see, there's already CSS here. It's a, the routing number. There's a style class. There's a special style class added by the HR apps teams to direct deposit. And you and I could just write some CSS directly against routing number and inject that with page activate. But I have another idea. How about we go with a utility method, one that you and I could reuse, create some CSS that we could, a style class, you and I could use anywhere we want to apply some standard masking rules or appearance. So let's go ahead and just mock this up in our web browser. I'm going to create my style class here, or define, you might say, JSM underscore mask dash before, meaning, hey, show a masking character, but put it before. And then we actually don't want to mask the column. We want to mask or apply that visual indicator in the ps underscore box dash value. So I'm going to select that and then start creating my style rule. That JSM underscore box, uh, excuse me, it is mask dash before, and it is the box dash value, ps underscore box dash value we want to mask. And then colon colon before, meaning tell the browser to select the content right before. And we want to insert some content there. So let's go with content. And let's go with a dot. I can see the dot already appearing. That's too small. Let's go with an X. How about this question mark? There you go. You see the question mark on the screen. And that's good. That's a good starting point. But I really want that padlock. So let's grab the padlock. And then in here, we'll just paste. I like that. Three, four, ten. How many do you want? I don't know. You just put in as many as you want. I like it. Looks good. So we've mocked it up here in our web browser. Next step is to move that into PeopleSoft. I pre-created a style sheet. I've already got page activate event mapping people code set up. Oh, we teach people code or event mapping all the time. We've got lots of other videos talking about event mapping. So let's not talk about that here. Let's save that for a different episode. And then let's go to our style sheet and paste in our CSS. Now, I'm tempted. I'm tempted right here to just hit the refresh button, but sometimes it doesn't work. And I've got this all mocked up beautifully here. And if I were to hit the refresh button right now and it didn't work, I'd lose it. And then I'd say, oh, <laughs> so let's do this instead. Let's open a new window. And then we can say, oh, but at least we still have it. See, I left one step out. We need to go back to our people code. And on in this case, what we're doing is row init people code on row init mask the rows. Which rows? Well, in our case, all of them. We also need to say row init add a style class. Dot add ff class. JSM underscore, ooh, what's it called? Let's just copy paste to avoid any typos. And no, this one here, it's, it's good, right? This one, it's broken. Let's hit the refresh button and, oh, wow, that is so cool. Do you see the, the masking characters appearing there? They're emoji. Now, interesting thing on emoji, they happen to be device dependent as well as font dependent. So it might actually give you cons inconsistent results. Now, I like it because it was simple, but I'm wondering if there might be a different approach that you might consider more consistent. And that is rather than using actual characters here, what if we were to use some sort of a font glyph, a very fixed font, such as font awesome icons. So let's try that next as an alternative approach or an alternative way to work around the limitation that we hit.
So let's go back here. Let's see, we're already injecting Font Awesome. You can see that in our sources. Go to CSPS Cache and then down here to the, this, is this one here. We're already importing Font Awesome. Um, so let's just go ahead and grab a font. Oh, we've got an icon. So we've got security here. What about this shield? I like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this Unicode sequence for the shield. And I wanna mock this up again. How about let's do it in this window this time. And rather than using the Unicode characters, let's do this. Let's go back to our style sheet and comment all of this out. Perfect. Now we can start over as if we didn't have anything there. And we'll do the same thing again. We've got JSM mask before. So dot JSM underscore mask dash before dot PS underscore box dash value before. Fantastic. And let's do this. Let's go with font dash family, font awesome, and then content. Oh, we need to put a slash in front. Perfect. Do you see the shield? Isn't that amazing? And I think we want a space there. Now, interesting, we have to actually put two spaces. And I think I want a couple of shields. I like that. And I also think I want a slightly lighter shade, you know, sort of like a disabled type thing. So if we go with color, yeah, that kind of fades it out a little bit. Uh, less emphasis on the shields. I like that. You know, perhaps you want to use some characters that you can't you can't model with emoji. Uh, maybe perhaps we can find a glyph like what we have here from Font Awesome, like these shields, for example. I love this. I think this is beautiful. So I'm going to grab this content then and go back here to our style sheet and paste this in instead. And again, our trick, because this is beautiful, it works, and I'm concerned if we reload that it might not be there. So how about we do a new window again? And oh, that is so amazing. Now we have a whole library of people tools tips to share with you. Check it out at jsmpros.com slash all access to get access to all of our recorded courses, videos, activity guides, and downloads. I mean, everything. And check out our live events as well. We teach people tools topics like this every week. Check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea. Do you have a group you'd like to train? Give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now, before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have an idea you'd like us to discuss in a future soundbite? If so, share it with us at soundbites.jsmpros.com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.